Today, Amazon announced Alexa Plus. Amazon says Alexa will be smarter, more conversational, and more capable. So maybe this is the Alexa we've been waiting for. So in this video, we're gonna talk about what all it's gonna be able to do, availability, and pricing. So make sure to stay the end for pricing or just use the chapters and skip ahead. Also stick around so you can hear about when you'll be able to start using this. Amazon is saying this is the next generation of Alexa powered by generative AI. So with that, it's gonna be smarter supposedly and it's going to remember things. So which would be nice. You think about all these years of talking to your echoes and all that information going in, and your Echo really has no idea who you are. Why this is a big deal for Amazon is they need to keep up with Google and Apple with their partnership with ChatGPT and some of these other AI companies coming out. So it's important that they make this happen. It's also a big deal because this is the first time Amazon's doing a subscription model for Alexa. Now with that paid subscription model, maybe we'll get less ads. Um, probably not. And I'll tell you why with the pricing in a minute. I did make a video about Amazon ads and why I got rid of my Echo Shows. I'll put a link to that in the description and at the end of this video. And uh, please subscribe uh, so you can check out the next one of these videos. I think the best way to cover this is to go to Amazon's blog page. And I'll put a link to that in the description too. That way you can read about it, all of this in more detail. This is how Amazon describes the new capabilities of Alexa Plus. She helps you get things done. She keeps you entertained. Helps you learn, keeps you organized, summarizes complex topics, and can converse about virtually anything. Alexa Plus can manage and protect your home, make reservations, and help you track, discover, and enjoy new artists. She can also help you search, find, or buy virtually any item online and make useful suggestions based on your interests. I'm curious with that searching online to buy things that is it going to search and show you options on other other sites. Before we talk about what else Alexa Plus is going to do, I want to talk about the interface on this Echo Show. If we look here, we're not seeing your normal Echo with a little rectangle on the side showing you stuff and a couple of widgets. This is showing us full screen stuff here. So I'm wondering if we're going to see any speed update with this. So next, let's talk about the more conversational Echo. Alexa is supposed to become easier to talk to, so you don't need to issue very strict commands about things. You can talk more naturally, which really can be helpful for the non-tech person. It's one thing for someone like myself who remembers how to say things properly, but it's too much friction for the non-tech. Amazon also talks about turning talk into action. And with this, they're saying that there are tens of thousands of different services that uh, can work together, services and devices. And they've created what they call experts. With these experts, apparently you can control your smart home, all different devices. You can make reservations or appointments, floor and music across different stations, grocery order groceries from all over. Um, yeah, it sounds good. I think the problem with some of that is it just looking at the limitations of existing skills. Um, yeah, you can order a pizza now with your Echo and it'll reorder your last thing from Domino's. So I'm curious to see how deep some of this stuff goes. And another way that Alexa Plus is gonna take action is with these agentic capabilities, which will enable Alexa to navigate the internet in a self-directed way to complete tasks on your behalf behind the scenes. Let's say you need to get your oven fixed, Alexa Plus will be able to navigate the web, use Thumbtack, discover the relevant service provider, authenticate, a arrange your repair and come back to tell you it's done. There's no need to supervise or intervene. That sounds like too good to be true and a little scary. You know, are they comparing quotes? You know, we making sure we getting the high, the low, the middle, you know, that's a whole lot to turn over. I'll let my car drive me before I'll let uh, assistant book stuff for me. Another big thing with this, which I think is good, especially if it really uh, starts to learn more about preferences. With Alexa Plus, you get a more personalized experience. You can give information about yourself, your family, dates, all of this stuff, like the example Amazon gives, if you're planning a dinner for family, Alexa Plus can remember that you love pizza, your daughter's a vegetarian, and your partner's gluten-free to suggest a recipe or restaurant. This is something that gets interesting, and you gotta think about the privacy side of this, is Alexa Plus has deep knowledge. And here it says you can add to her knowledge by sharing documents, emails, photos, messages, uh, all via a desktop browser, the mobile app, or even via email for Alexa to remember, summarize, or take action. Yeah, I don't know, I can't bring myself to just start feeding data 
into a Alexa. It doesn't bother me with Apple intelligence and the idea of the data that's already on my phone being accessed for the stuff, but oh yeah, I, I don't know. Now talking about the privacy side of this with all that different information being feeded in and the fact that it's learning when your lights are coming on and off and when you're arriving at home and uh, your requests, all that stuff combined together, it is more data that you're feeding. You know, will that data be used to target ads to you? Um, I mean, something that's different from other AI stuff, even on my iPhone with Apple intelligence, is that it knows what I'm doing when it's phone related, but it's not keeping track of other things going on. Same with ChatGPT. When I stop in inputting information, its data collection stops at that point. Now, this new Alexa is supposed to be more proactive and do things on your behalf. Amazon's claiming that Alexa Plus will do certain things without uh, you needing to take action. So if you're running late for a meeting, it might automatically notify attendees. A flight's delayed, it could reschedule an Uber. This is one of those things that I don't want my assistant doing anything for me automatically that isn't smart home related. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? Let me know. Uh, one of the things they are introducing uh, with this on the uh, screen to give a more, uh, I don't know, personal interaction, they're introducing a lexicons, which uh, with responses, you can see visual animations to uh, provide feedback when interacting with Alexa. These little animations are at the bottom of the screen. A lexicon reactions could be a smile or show you a heart or check mark. Uh, yeah, a little just, um, hey, I'm here for you. Before we talk pricing, there's an article in here too that are the 50 things to try with Alexa Plus. I don't want to go through all these, but I do want to point out a couple of nice Nice, interesting ones. With a lot of these, it's demonstrating how you have that more personalized experience, you know, full on conversations, real time news, personalized news summaries. You manage your calendars and emails. The real ones that are interesting to me are the smart home ones. I like the idea that you can create routines by voice. For a lot of people, they there's a friction in there that they don't understand how to automate things. But if it was easy just to say, turn on my living room lights every morning at 630. Write all these things with voice would really help the non-technical folks, I think. And that goes with the being able to understand just normal language. That could really open up the smart home side of things. You got the chat with Alexa to control your home so you can have more conversational stuff. I'm chilly and then Alexa Plus will know to turn up the thermostat. Uh, customize your own smart home widget uh, so your favorite devices and groups view the status of those devices. The Echo Shows for years have been bad when it comes to a touch interface. So hopefully some of these changes with the widgets and stuff, hopefully they're optimized a little better. So they're just a little quicker to get things done. Speaking of getting things done, they got getting things done in the real world. Order groceries, uh, have Alexa Plus keeping an eye on deals, make dinner reservations, yeah. Um, order delivery, booking Ubers, you you gotta really trust this thing. Some of these could be good for the household, the communication side. And I could see this uh, using a couple of these, like setting personalized reminders for the family and having those visual reminders come up. Uh, Alexa, when you see Dan, remind him it's his turn to walk the dog. That sounds kind of cool to me. Now let's talk pricing. This is a subscription model. If you're not an Amazon Prime member, it is $19.99 a month. But if you are an Amazon Prime member, and this is the shocker, it is free. It comes with Amazon Prime. I am blown away by that. I figured it would be $5 a month, $10 a month, something to pay for it. And in my mind at $20 a month, I, I don't see paying for that. And I think a lot of the people that, um, that could really use this, like folks that are non-technical, but they know their echoes and uh, they could really benefit from a smarter Alexa. I think probably a lot of those folks already have Amazon Prime. Uh, would I pay $20 a month for it? No, I'd rather pay for something like ChatGPT and just have something focused on uh, information for me personally, or just use Apple intelligence. So there's the free version of Alexa still available. So if you've been happy with that, no need for a subscription. But if you want a smarter, more useful Alexa, it sounds like just stick with having Amazon Prime. I think if everybody had to pay a subscription on it, I, I'm sure a lot of folks wouldn't even bother using it. Alexa Plus will start rolling out in the US in the next few weeks during an early access period and subsequently in waves over the coming months. We'll prioritize Echo Show 8 
10, 15, and 21 device owners in the early access period. What are your thoughts on Alexa Plus? Does this sound like something you're interested in? I know there's a lot of folks that have just kind of given up on Alexa and they're moving over to Apple Home or just not using their devices for much more than smart home. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you made it this far, please hit that subscribe button so you can check out the next video. Here's that link over to why I got rid of my Echo Shows. The ads were just too much and maybe this update will fix it. We'll see. Thanks for watching. Bye.